Every one of you men that I see in front of me today had a father who 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 had a father. And in the last thousand years, imagine this. One of your fathers for sure, you and you and you, stood on the earth with a sword in his hand. A sword on a battlefield. He might have killed somebody or he might have been killed. But he, but he created a son first. Who created a son? Who created a son? Who created a son? All the way down to you. Imagine that. There were men that were standing beside him a thousand years ago who have no living sons today. The implication of that is through all the wars and pestilence and disease and famine and migration and persecution that happened in the last thousand years, your bloodline survived. You have the blood of champions. You had that father who stood on the battlefield with a sword in his hand, fierce. And we're afraid to drink, talk to this girl drinking coffee. Uh, mm. It's quite late and I do want to watch the rest of my X-Files episode before I go to bed. But I simply had to comment on this because I find it kind of fascinating. I mean, first of all, obviously it's, it's self-help for incels type nonsense. Uh, you know, women are human beings. Treat them as such, approach them as such, and you should be fine. But I do find it fascinating that he's putting the individual's context into uh, time depth. It's, uh, the, the, yeah, the, the, the fact, uh, by definition, that if you are here, you have had many, many ancestors who have come before you. Unfortunately, he draws conclusions about bloodlines and, and, and you know, the need for being fierce and, and powerful all the time uh, to, to help you ask the girl out of the coffee shop. But it's interesting, and it's a thought process that, that, that many archaeologists go through, only we tend to come to other conclusions. Most people tend to think of family trees uh, along these lines, where we have you at the bottom, also known as ego, the person for whom the tree is being drawn. And then we have your parents and your grandparents and so on and so forth. And the tree gets wider and wider as it goes further back. Uh, and it all stems from you, the, 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 la the latest model, as it were, in that tree, the latest fruit from the tree. But note immediately you actually have two uh, bloodlines. You have your mother and your father, obviously, and, and, and so on and so forth. But there's another implication here, and that is that every point on this tree actually doesn't just serve you, it actually spreads out from itself downwards. So, obviously, many people have siblings, cousins, second cousins, so on and so forth. But eventually, on this tree that goes wider back and wider down, because pe all these people are having other children and they're marrying other people, you're actually related to people that you would not count as family. Another way of saying this is to say that you are a member of a species, the human species, and it gets better. In the even grander scheme of things, uh, Homo sapiens, us, have only been around for the past 300,000 years on these four continents. Uh, we have other ancestors that go back on this chart, two million years, and Homo neanderthalensis there, Neanderthals are related, they're sort of cousins of ours. And and even further back, it just keeps on going. Uh, I once saw this really lovely uh, note pinned to an anthropology professor's door that said, <laughs> be kind to people, be good, be strong, be fierce if you have to at times. But remember, you are the product of billions, certainly millions of years of evolution. Act like it. Hello, just following on quickly from last night's video about uh, bloodlines, family trees, and actually sexual selection, i.e. getting the girl, getting the partner to like you. Uh, there's actually some interesting research that's come out of anthropology that shows that, that stereotypical male traits like being uh, violent, being powerful, being strong, being stoic, being the warrior, being the hunter, do work. You know, they work, especially if in your society, in your tribe, in your culture, that is a, 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 a gender role that you're expected to perform. But also, actually, there's a surprising flip side to that coin. Some of the most successful males in societies where roles are, are divided by sex, for example, hunting and gathering, if you want to go really stereotypical, are actually the men who go off gathering with the women. Now, uh, this is because, uh, shock horror, they actually talk to women. 
<laughs> they actually get to know the women around them. They become more attracted to those women, and often they have either formal or possibly informal relationships that lead to offspring. Just another interesting little aspect of that, that whole thought process from last night. Cheers.